We are down to the final event here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. CrossFit athletes take pride in being able to adapt, and that's exactly what we have done here. The weather continues to be a problem here in Round Rock, Texas, and as a result, we're not going to be on the field anymore. We are going to head indoors, and this is going to be an old-fashioned, gritty CrossFit throwdown in event number nine presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. It is the cleanup. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with former Affiliate Cup champion Adrian Conway. We've got Kiki Dixon in the concourse here at Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. And Adrian, you could not have scripted this any better for the women. It is winner take all as far as the podium is concerned here in the final event. That's right. This is exactly what we all hope to see. And the weather has been something that we've all had to adapt to. And that's what champions do, Sean. They adapt to a change in schedule. They adapt to different events. They adapt to different locations. And that's where we find ourselves now for this final. Laura Horvath against Tia Claire Toomey. Winner take all. Nothing matters up to this point. It all comes down to this event. Here are your overall standings coming into the ninth and final event here at the Invitational. Horvath and Toomey tied with 680 points. Gabby Magawa is also tied with Emma Lawson at 555 points. Gazan and Carey have an outside shot, but they're going to have to really do well in this event and get help in the process. The cleanup is event number nine, presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. We've got a heavy barbell and a jump rope. We do, Sean. I really love, love, love the format of this particular event. It's going to be a test for all these athletes. It's going to be a barbell, some open space, and their jump rope. They're going to go through three rounds. It's going to descend in execution. Three rounds of this opening block of 25 double unders and five power cleans. The weight is 175 pounds. Two rounds, 25 double unders, five squat cleans at 175. And then one round, 25 double unders, five clean and jerks to finish four times. And we have moved inside. So we're going to have some smaller heats here. We will have five heats of four for the women. There's Elena Caratala Sanahuya getting her hands chalked up and getting set here for this final event. And the money bars are back out. And you can see the crowd is just packed in here in the concourse. Kind of a cool environment, not the one we thought we would have, but again, rain forcing us inside. And the show must go on. Here is the lane assignment for heat number one. Kyra Milligan in lane one. This could be a good event for her. Hey, you know it, man. She showed up big when we saw the back squat. She showed up big when we saw the deadlift. And we like this combination of movements. A monostructural piece in the form of double unders. Not going to give these athletes too much trouble. They're going to be relaxed and execute there. But that weight is going to give a few of these women some trouble. And it's not going to be a hang-up at all for Miss Kyra Milligan. Milligan, Neil, Rolf, Freyova. And we have made a change to the weight. It's now 155, not 175. So things continue to evolve here. 155 on the barbell for the women. So a little lighter. I'm going to go ahead and say equally as devastating, folks. If you know the shift from this type of load, it, it's going to make a difference in regards to how fast they're able to attack the barbell. But it's not going to make a difference for the overall favorites here and who is going to excel. It's still going to be the stronger athlete with the most fortitude and grit on that barbell, and especially those final three rounds. We're underway, 25 double unders, and then five power cleans to start. We'll do three rounds of that. And again, a pretty unique setting here. We saw this with the strong men. We had to move some of those events inside due to the weather. Touch and go on the power cleans. Perhaps looking to create some separation between herself and the field. Being aggressive. Milligan on to round two now. As she heads back to the jump rope, Emily Rolf moving back as well. So now every athlete is through the first round of the first part of this event. Now I love the aggressiveness there of Kyra coming out touch and go. You have to make sure that it doesn't cost you too much time or energy in your transitions, though, right? Meaning that if 
you get your heart rate up and it spikes it just for the sake of touch and go to gain three to four seconds, perhaps. You can't lose that in a transition or those touch and go were absolutely pointless. Milligan is still your leader. She's now done with two of the three rounds with the power cleans. Cranking through another set of 25 double unders. Karin Freyova in the back of the all black is in second place in the heat. And now Emily Rolfe moves into third. Shelby Neal still on the barbell to close out round two. And Milligan for the final time on the power cleans. Kyra doing a great job at pulling with patience off the floor, even though she's doing touch and go. She's tracing the silhouette of her body, keeping it close to her. Patience off the floor and then jumps that bar with speed and ferocity into a front rack position with aggressive elbow turnover. Now Milligan is done with three rounds. She'll move into the two round portion of this event. 25 double unders and five squat cleans at 155 as we approach the two minute mark. Milligan now to the first round of squat cleans at 155. I'm choosing to go with singles here. Yeah, wise choice in my opinion for, for Kyra there, but doing a great job at staying at the bar. Anyone who's experienced some fatigue in the middle of a barbell cycling event or workout in your affiliate, no, it's very tempting to drop it, step away, take a breath, put your hands on your knees. She's put on a clinic right now so far with this barbell cycling that's been asked to these athletes here in this final event. Run round is down for Milligan and back to the 25 double unders. She is your leader. Rayova and Rolf and Sanahuya on their first round of squat cleans as well. Rolf are in the middle of the gray shirt. Shot this out. into round two. In this atmosphere, man, I would, I would love it so much, being so close and personal to the fans. Like, up in your face, the volume is escalated. It's loud. They see you suffering there. It takes me back. Old school days of, of, of competition. It's like throwing down in your gym in front of a bunch of friends here. And Milligan is almost done with her second round of squat cleans. Again, 155 pounds on the barbell. Freyova, it looks like she's on her second round as well. And putting some pressure on Milligan. Milligan now back to the jump rope. 25 double unders and now five clean and jerks to close out this event. Freyova trying to catch up with Kyra Milligan. Now to finish the event, they have to step over their barbells. That's when time will be called, and time is being kept down on the floor. Second rep for Milligan. Freyova getting to the barbell on the far side of the floor. She's through one rep. The three reps remain for Milligan. Final rep for Kyra Milligan as Freyova doesn't look like she's going to be able to catch her. So Kyra Milligan will have the early time to beat. Barbell is down. She will hop over, and that will be time. About 4.33 unofficial for Kyra Milligan. Remember, to finish the event, they have to just step over their barbell. That is when time will be called. Very impressive execution there by both Milligan and Freyova. Freyova choosing to do singles on the... Rolf with a no rep there. Yeah, and, and, and Sean, just to allude to that, these athletes have been through the ringer, right? Event number nine, their upper body got taxed quite a bit already this morning. It's extremely important that they finish the jerk on these clean jerks with their legs. They've in, in their, their smoke, they're already fatigued, but they've really got to jump the bar off that front rack position in order to help stabilize it overhead. One rep remains for Karnatala Sanahuya. She's across and done. And now Emily Rolf will finish up, and she has to step over for time to be called, and she will. Approaching the six-minute mark here. And Shelby Neal is the last woman on the floor. Now with one rep remaining. And there it is for Shelby Neal in heat one.
is done. Kyra Milligan unofficially 4.33, the top time. The four heats remaining. Kyra didn't leave a lot of opportunity for athletes to beat that score. She she hit the touch and go. She didn't waste a ton of time in transitions. That was one thing I was eyeing up. Did she start too fast? Was it too risky? Was it really worth it? And I feel like she capitalized for the most part throughout that workout. Freyova closed the gap a bit through the middle rounds and into that final round of clean and jerks. However, it wasn't enough. And it was this move early on that gave Kyra Milligan the lead, the touch and go, the confidence in her capacity and ability to cycle that barbell. And then, of course, that middle round, a squat clean. She chose singles and was steady at the bar. She didn't step away. She didn't walk away. This is a lot of discipline and fortitude to do that. And then with the clean and jerk, she did a great job going power, power with the power clean and a power jerk, but finishing the jerk every time in a great position upper with her upper body and driving with her legs. What a way to finish her first Rogue Invitational experience. Kyra Milligan unofficially at four minutes, 33 seconds to take heat number one, and we will reset for heat number two as once again, weather has forced us inside on the concourse here. Saw it with the Strongman events. A couple of those having to be held inside the Iron Bull and the log lift for reps. And it's a pretty intimate environment down there as we close out the 2023 Rogue Invitational. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with Heat 2 for the women in the final event here in Round Rock, Texas. We are in the final event for the women as we are set to crown a champion here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. One heat is down, three remain in the cleanup presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. I'm Sean Woodland with Adrian Conway. Kiki Dixon is somewhere in that mass of humanity in the concourse here at Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. Lane assignments here for heat number two. There is Christine Colenbrander who comes in in 11th place overall with 425 points. She'll be out on the floor with Lauren Fisher, Paige Semenza, Paige Powers, and Bethany Flores. Colin Brander, one of the most explosive athletes within this field, loves barbell cycling and has the strength to support it. I expect her to do very well in this event. The event here, it's three rounds, then two rounds, then one round. Jump rope stays the same, but the movement on the barbell will change. That's right. We're going to go three rounds with 25 double unders and five power cleans to start, all at 155 pounds. The two rounds will involve five squat cleans. And then finally, the one round paired with the 25 double unders is a clean and jerk, any style. And there is Christine Colenbrander. Best finish was a third place and seat at the bar. That was the opening event on Friday. She's got four finishes inside the top 10 here. And it's only 10 points out of a spot inside the top 10. Yeah, and she's got to be eyeing that up. With the experience now that she's gained as a games athlete, being here at Rogue, I, I think that it would build tremendous momentum for her looking forward to finish as a top 10 athlete here at the Invitational. Paige Powers, meanwhile, sits in 14th place overall. She's got 345 points. Powers has had herself a great year as we are underway. She won Wanapalooza back in January, the first 10th the CrossFit Games in August, the best individual finish in Madison. 25 double unders to kick us off then. It's five power cleans at 155 pounds, 70 kilos. Three rounds of that. One athlete choosing to follow suit, but Kyra Milligan did we see Christine Kullenbander not quite touch and go, but really staying as very close to the barbell as she executes her power cleans. Kullenbrander and Semenza going back to the jump rope, as is Lauren Fisher. Now here comes Paige Powers, leaves Bethany Flores, the only woman still on round one. Now everybody is moving into round number two. 25 more double unders here. Time to beat unofficially is four minutes and 33 seconds from Kyra Milligan. To end the event, they have to step over their barbells. That is when time will be called. Paige Semenza on the right, Colin Brander on the left. Colin Brander going touch and go for the first two reps. Then a quick re-grip and she's back to work. 
That's exactly how she started the last round, Sean. One touch and go, then very close back to regrip the barbell every repetition. You want to create a rhythm and stay steady there on the barbell. And then, of course, you got to relax those shoulders, relax your grip to get back to the double unders. I love this pairing of the barbell work being slightly on the heavy side and then coupled with an elegant rhythmic movement like the double under really challenges your ability to showcase your ability to have a high level of execution, agility, accuracy, coordination. Semenza and Colin Brander to the barbell for the same, at the same time to close out the first portion of this event. Fisher's right behind him. Paige Powers sits in fourth. And it is Bethany Flores still on the jump rope who sits in fifth place in this heat. After this, we move to the two rounds of the 25 double unders and five squat cleans. And Colin Brander is done. And she will now move on to the second portion of this event along with Paige Semenza and Lauren Fisher. Paige Powers right on Fisher's heels. Now here's the advantage that Colin Brander has from the rounds that we've already seen, is that she catches her power cleans extremely high. She's a high hinger, which means her hips stayed high in the pull of the power clean. She was able to save her legs for these squat cleans that are looming. She just finished 25 double unders. Now she's going to go into two rounds of five squat cleans before she goes back to do some more double unders. Paige Semenza gets through that first rep just ahead of Colin Brander. Semenza, your leader right now in this heat. That's two of five reps down for Semenza. Powers and Fisher also under round one of two on the squat cleans. All these women right now doing a great job to stay at the bar. Semenza with the least amount of time between repetitions thus far. Hands go directly onto the barbell. She sets her back, drives through her legs. You see her there to the right of your screen. She's stepping back already for the next round of double up. Semenza and then Fisher are your top two in the heat. Now Colin Brander is falling back into fourth place as Paige Semenza gets quickly back to the jump rope. Paige Semenza's best finish was a third place in event five. That was the duel. We talked about how easy these athletes make things look, and that's including in the, the double under. There's a lot of athletes out there that have been doing CrossFit a long time that have struggled to master that movement. And these athletes, it's, it's a foreign thing when they actually trip up on that, that movement. Lauren Fisher on the right side is your leader right now in the heat. Paige Powers is staying right with her, but a rep behind Fisher. This is the final round on the squat cleans, and then after this is the five clean and jerks. And again, to finish the event, they have to step over the barbell. This event moved inside because of the weather outside. And now Fisher and Powers back to the jump rope. Wow, and Semenza Christy heads back, really and now Colin Brander is, is falling back here. Yeah, she, she's in the habit of stepping away from her bar, and that's, she's losing tremendous amounts of time. These other ladies might not have the same power as her at the top end, but they're having that execution on the conditioning side. Now Paige Powers, she was first to the barbell. We have the five cleaning jerks here. Lauren Fisher trying to catch Powers, who got to the barbell first. Powers now on her final rep, and she'll have to step over the barbell to finish the event. And she's going to be close to Milligan's time. And we'll have to wait for the official word on that because that is right around 433 for Paige Powers. Fisher has one rep remaining. And she is done and will step across and close out her 2023 Rogue Invitational. Great finish there for Lauren. I mean, very impressive by Paige Powers. She made so much time up on those power clean and power jerks there at the end. She's great ground to shoulder and shoulder overhead. Semenza and Colin Brander are in, and that leaves Bethany Flores as the only woman left here in this second of four heats. There is Paige Powers. Who got really close to Kyra Milligan's top time. Unofficially around 433 as Bethany Flores has a handful of reps left. She's almost done trying to get the crowd behind her here. Bethany very aware of it, keeping her body in the safest positions possible. You might be watching her and wondering, like, oh man, she doesn't even look that tired. She, she could probably go. She's, she's being a bit cautious here. Again, 
she, she has experience missing an entire year due to a back injury. She's got a history growing up being a gymnast, and she sustained back injuries even as a young athlete. So when she found the CrossFit, it was a way for her to minimize the pain that she was experiencing from some of her childhood sports, and she loved to compete at a high level. 2021 ran into having COVID at the CrossFit Games. We missed out on watching her take the floor, perhaps the fittest version we'd ever seen of Bethany Flores. And then this last year, she got to come back and grace the floor, finish 15th in the world. This is the final rep for Bethany Flores, and with that, two heats are down, two heats remain. And we'll have to see who has the top time, because Paige Powers and Kyra Milligan were extremely close by the clock on the screen, but time is being kept out there on the concourse. And Paige Powers, we do know, is going to end her 2023 Rogue Invitational with a heat win. And Sean, we've talked about her a few times this weekend. She's having a great year. She's learning to compete at a very high level. Won a competition as high as, as Wadapalooza as an elite competitor. And she really put on a clinic, a pacing clinic, not starting in the lead, but graciously building back the momentum. She's Fluid and elegant with this barbell, especially when it comes to power clean and power jerk. She really has a, does a great job at finishing the jerk with her legs as we watch it jump the barbell over her head and just strolls to almost the fastest event time that we've seen so far unofficially. And oh, by the way, I got plenty of effort and energy left to keep my hands still enough for the selfie with the fans. Well, two heats are down, two heats to go here as we are closer to crowning a women's champion at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. We are halfway through the ninth and final event here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational for the women as heat number three makes its way onto the floor. Event nine is the cleanup presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. It's the cleanup and the money bars are back. These athletes are gonna work through three rounds with 25 double unders, five power cleans, two rounds, 25 double unders, five squat cleans, and one round, 25 double unders, five clean and jerks. The barbell is at a set weight of 155 pounds. Keys to this event. Gosh, the keys are to relax. Do you breathe and execute? It's so easy on the final event of any competition to wanna do something grandiose or great but you gotta just be you. And then finish with the legs, that final movement, the clean and jerk is gonna be after a ton of work has already been done, both with the lower body and the upper body, but they've got to drive with their legs so they can lock out and support the weight over their head for five reps at the end. Lane assignments for this third of four heats. Danny Spiegel, Ariel Lowen, Emma Carey, all out there along with Danielle Brandon and Manon Anganese, and we have a moderately loaded barbell. Danny Spiegel's gonna love that. Yeah, and you gotta, you gotta love to pick her as a favorite here with what we've seen from her throughout the course of this weekend and her career. A barbell at 155 pounds simply affects her differently than it does the other women. It's lighter compared to her traditional one rep maxes. Danny Spiegel has four finishes inside the top 10. Right now, ninth place overall with 435 points. Coming off a ninth place finish earlier in Big Cat. And she's directly tied with Manon Anganes, who would, would love nothing more than to creep into that top 10 and solidify a great spot for her to wrap up this year's Rogue Invitation. And if you're just joining us, we had to move into the concourse here at Round Rock Stadium in Dell Diamond as we get things underway because of the weather. One of the cool things about that, the fans now are right on top of the action. As we begin with the 25 double unders, and we'll move into five power cleans at 155. Three rounds of that as Emma Carey and Ariel Lowen look to be the first two to the barbell. You see one athlete going touch and go. That's Danny Spiegel to the left of your screen where she keeps her hands on the bar, guides it to the ground, even guides it back to that front rack position every repetition. She must have got her jump rope caught up on her. And, that, and that, that's a significant amount of time that, that can cost you if you have those type of slip ups throughout the, the event there. You want it to stay right where it goes and put it down where you want it to be every time. Spiegel is in the lead, but Ariel Lowen is right behind her along with Emma Carey. She is done, and Danny Spiegel and Danielle Brandon along with Lowen and Carey moving back to the barbell. Spiegel looking to go touch and go on all five of these reps. And she is done, and she'll go back to the jump rope. Final round here of the power cleans. The 90 rep mark is when she will then move into the two rounds 
that involved squat clean to that 155 pound barbell. Brandon Aganese and Ariel Lowe and all of the jump rope at the same time to start their third rounds. And McCary right now, fifth place in the heat. Eagle is done. Five more power cleans. She's bought herself about a four second lead on the field right now, but we see her starting to drop the bar. And you, and you don't know, Sean, if she started touching going, now this isn't by choice. If she didn't intend to start breaking up these reps, now they're taking her too long in the form of singles. Some of these ladies who executed singles early might start to be able to close the gap and catch her now into the two rounds of 25 and 5 squat cleans. Spiegel still in the lead, back to the jump rope. Now Danielle Brandon and Ariel Lowen right behind her. I know Nanganay's starting to move up as well. Four minutes, 33 seconds unofficially. That's about the fastest time that we have seen from both Kyra Milligan and Paige Powers was close to that in the prior heat. And already we see Brandon take a slight lead now. Beagle and Brandon are neck and neck. Lowen and Carey just a rep back now. Right side of the screen is Danielle Brandon. She's done. So Brandon now moves into the lead ahead of Danny Spiegel. Brandon back to the jump rope for 25 more double unders. The 150 rep mark is when they will be done with this portion of the event, and then they will have one final round of the 25 double unders and the five clean and jerks. And to finish the event, they have to step over their barbell. That's right. And Danielle doing exactly what she's done round after round gets directly to the barbell. There's no hesitation. There's no adjusting her position. She literally pushes the barbell down to the ground, keeps her hands at it, keeps a relatively wide foot base, so there's not a lot of adjusting with her feet, and then she goes after that next rep. You can see fatigue starting to set in. That was her final set of squat cleans there. Now she's into 25 double unders, and she'll have five clean and jerks remaining. Danny Spiegel is now back in second place. Emma Carey sits in third, but it is close right now between Spiegel and Carey for second place in this third of four heats. Spiegel going back to the jump rope. One round now. Of double unders and clean and jerks. Ah, Brandon was called back. She had a no rep on a double under. She was almost at the barbell, had to go back again. And one thing's for sure, she's great at power cleans. She actually struggles more from the squat in her overhead position. Her jerk position as she finishes each one of these reps is superior to many of the athletes in the field. Very secure. If she continues to finish with her leg, she's going to finish with a solid, solid time. And Daniel Brandon has a chance to set the top mark heading into the final heat. She is coming off an event win in Big Cat earlier. She's got to regroup, risking missing a rep here. Danny Spiegel with one rep remaining. Brandon is in, 427 unofficially for her. 426.62 seconds as Spiegel steps across. So 426.62, that is the new top time courtesy of Daniel Brandon. And McCary comes across, four minutes, 40 seconds. Danny Spiegel was able to get in ahead of what we believe was Kyra Milligan's prior best time of 433. Great adjustment there by Ariel Lone. We watch her do a split jerk to finish. This is a great way for athletes to speed the cycle rate when they know they don't have the drive to simply power jerk it. A split jerk is when you step one foot in front of the other, helps you drop your hips down and secure a lockout with your arms. Manon Anganese is finally in a 508.99 seconds. So now one heat remains in the final event for the women here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational, and it's Danielle Brandon with the top time so far at 426.62 seconds. Well, Sean, we say it a lot, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. And we watched Danielle Brandon start out with singles intentionally to save some juice for the latter part of this event. We're watching her work through some squat cleans there. There were two rounds of five of those, and then the power clean power jerk. And even with the great overhead position that she has, her legs completely out of juice. She had to pause for a second, gather herself to finish. She had one more rep there at that point, and she had to wait to make sure that she could secure that final rep and not have to do an extra one due to a miss. Great execution there, riding her threshold by Danielle Brandon. 
three heats down, one remain, and everyone's going to be chasing Danielle Brandon's top time of 426.62 seconds. As Danny Spiegel makes her way off the floor. We have one heat to go. <laughs> as we take a look at the heat results for heat number three, as Spiegel and Brandon put up the top two times that we've seen so far, Emma Carey came in at four minutes and 40 seconds. Ariel Lowen goes sub five, and it's Menel and Anganese finishing in fifth. It's a winner take all. Final heat coming up next. One event for one championship. It's winner take all as we are down to the final heat of event nine, the cleanup presented by Beyond the Whiteboard here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Adrian Conway. We've got Kiki Dixon down there on the concourse here at Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. Here are your lane assignments for this final heat. Tia Toomey and Laurel Horvath, they are tied with 680 points. Whoever wins between the two of them will take home the championship. Meanwhile, Gabby Magawa and Emma Lawson, they are tied in points. Whoever wins that matchup winds up on the podium. Could not have scripted it better than this, Adrian. Couldn't have scripted it better. The race is tight. It's, it's win for the championship, win for the podium. There's nothing else we'd rather see. We haven't seen T in a race this tight since 2017. Her and Cara Saunders going blow for blow. Two point separation that she won in 2017 at the CrossFit Games. So, I, gosh, I'm, my hands are sweaty. I'm nervous, <laughs> and I'm not even competing. It is pretty simple. Whoever crosses the finish line first between Laura Horvath and Tia Toomey will be crowned the Rogue Invitational Champion. It will be either the second for Horvath or the fourth for Toomey. And a podium spot up for grabs between Gabby Magawa and Emma Lawson. High stakes, high pressure. It's all about staying composed, running your race. There is Emma Lawson, who only has one finish outside of the top 10. She, Horvath, and Toomey are the only three athletes who can claim that in this competition. Here we go. Toomey and Horvath for the championship. Magawa and Lawson for the final spot on the podium. 25 double unders to kick us off, then five power cleans at 155. Three rounds of that to start. So 90 reps before you move into the next portion of the event. And Toomey and Horvath are running the barbell at the same time. Everyone choosing to do singles here. Seeing a similar technique to what we saw from Brandon in the last heat, where they keep their hands very close to the barbell, but they're letting it drop, letting gravity carry it down. Fast on the transitions is one of the keys. Laura Horvath having a very smooth transition to that set of double unders here. Everybody on to round two right now. Laura Horvath got to the jump rope just ahead of Toomey. Emma Lawson, though, towards the front as well. There go Toomey and Horvath to the barbell at the same time. Now remember, to finish this event, you have to step over your barbell and get on the mat for time to stop. Right now, Emma Lawson is ahead of Gabby Magawa in that battle for third place. And now, Laura Horvath back to the jump rope just ahead of Tia Toomey here. And a trip for Horvath as that will allow Toomey to pull even. And that's why there's a beautiful combination here. With the barbell being heavy, you've got to move quickly. Wow, Emma Lawson's cycle rate on this double under Sean is astounding. She hardly leaves the ground. She's able to make up time there. Or Horvath and Tia Toomey going rep for rep. Emma Lawson ahead of Gabby Magawa right now. Magawa just stepping up to her barbell. So this is good for Emma Lawson as they work their way through their third and final round of the power cleans. After this, it's two rounds of the 25 double unders and the five squat cleans at 155 pounds, 70 kilos. And Laurel Horvath continues to lead. Now I got to say, from what we've seen so far, there's a little bit more pop in Laura's legs. She's getting the bar to her clavicle a little bit faster every repetition. There's a little more spring in her jump. But now that we're going to go below parallel, we'll see if she can continue that pace. 
Horvath about a rep ahead now of Tia Toomey as they work their way into the first set of five squat cleans. Emma Lawson continues to lead Gabby McGowan. 120 rep mark is when they'll be done with this round. Laura Horvath is now back to the jump rope. Tia Toomey closing out her final rep and Toomey moving to the jump rope. Laura really doing a great job at breaking below parallel and, and redirecting her body immediately, not taking it too deep and traveling a distance as she doesn't need to go. Make the rep count, stand it up at the top. Horvath back to the barbell. This is her second and final set of squat cleans. Emma Lawson continues to lead Gabby McGowan by a significant margin right now. Final rep for Laura Horvath, and she will move back to the jump rope. Tia Toomey still has a rep left. But Laura Horvath has a chance to really put some distance between herself and Toomey right now. 25 double unders and five clean and jerks for the championship for Laura Horvath, and she leads Tia Toomey. she got a comfortable lead right now that's going to give her confidence as she approaches the bar for these five clean and jerks. Here comes Laura Horvath. One rep in as Tia Toomey just now getting to the barbell. Laura Horvath looking to defend her championship here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. She is one rep away. Final rep for Laura Horvath. And she is your 2023 Rogue Invitational Champion. Emma Lawson is beating Gabby McGowan. Lawson looks to put herself on the podium. What a time for Laura Horvath. 346.61 seconds, and Emma Lawson is in, and that may put her on the podium as now Tia Toomey will finish up, and she gets across the finish line looking to take second place overall. And what a return for Tia Toomey, and what a title defense for Laura Horvath. It is going to be a fun year in 2024. <laughs> oh, man, I have been asked so many times, Adrian, who do you think is going to win? I was like, I don't know. They're like, who do, you, who do you hope's going to win? I was like, I'd really like to see Laura come up because it leaves a great storyline for the season to come. What a performance by Laura here at the Rogue Invitational. Wow, what a statement for her to make to the rest of the world and the community. Six months after giving birth to her first daughter, Tia Toomey shows up the Rogue Invitational. Looks like she's going to take second place overall. Laura Horvath earning her second straight Rogue Invitational Championship, and she will have some momentum heading into the game season in 2024. <laughs> Laura Horvath with only one finish outside of the top five. And picking up right where she left off in Madison, Wisconsin. And one more look here is it was neck and neck between Laura Horvath and Tia Toomey, but it was on that final set of clean and jerks where Horvath finally was able to put enough distance between herself yeah, it really and Toomey. It really was. Uh, you know, Laura put on a clink the entire time. She, she had a bit more pop in her step, in her squat, in every aspect. Tia started to slow towards the end. We saw no rep there by Tia, as she didn't really finish with her legs, right? We talked about that as a point of performance. You gotta have the juice left in your legs to help your upper body. Laura had plenty of reserve left here in her power cleans and power jerks. Every rep looked the same, as I'm sure she felt the energy of the crowd and knew she had a lead, which catapulted her to a defending crown for the Rogue Invitational. Send it to Kiki Dixon with Laura Horvath. Laura, congratulations on winning this championship here. It was such a tight race between you guys coming to this final event, winner takes all. What does it mean to you to regain your title of the Rogue Invitational Champion? I mean, it means a lot because, to be honest, after the games, everyone said, because if T is not here, that's the only reason why I won. And this means a lot to me that I can prove to myself and everyone out there who's doubted me that I won because I deserve to put, be on the podium, so it means a lot. 
You, there were so many different moments throughout this weekend. Obviously winning is the creme de la creme, but what are some others that stand out to you from this weekend? The most, the, the, basically it's better than winning, is just sharing the competition floor with Gabby because we train together so much. Like, I see all the hard work that she puts in and she all the hard work I put in, so it's like, it's awesome to share the competition floor with her and be happy for her when she does well and then obviously sad for her when she doesn't, but it's just a very, very cool experience to have someone who is so close to me experience the same ups and downs with me. It was a wild weekend indeed, including the weather. What were you doing to keep a positive competitive mindset throughout the changes that were going on? To be honest, it's just part of the game. It was the same for everyone, so we just rolled with the punches. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Laura Horvath, back to back. Rogue Invitational Champion Rogue came Invitational. down to one event and she delivers when she needed to. So Laura Horvath defends her title. Tia Toomey is back and looking forward to seeing her continue to improve. And it looks like Emma Lawson is going to wind up on the podium as she was tied with Gabby Magawa in points coming into this event. Lawson was able to beat Magawa there in the cleanup. Lawson, another year on the podium. Great execution by her, and she's just going to physically continue to get stronger and stronger and become more and more of a threat, even at a competition like Rogue, where we know we're going to lean into some external loading, a little bit more higher power output. And she's going to continue to get more dangerous in, in the sport of CrossFit as she continues to develop. Like we said, you couldn't have scripted it any better. It came down to the final event. It was winner take all. Laura Horvath versus Tia Toomey for the championship. And at the end, it's Laura Horvath who defends her title, her second straight Rogue Invitational Championship. One champion has been crowned. We'll crown another coming up in a little bit. The men take on the cleanup as we close out Sunday at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. We've crowned our women's champion. Now it is time to find out who will be the men's champion here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland with former Affiliate Cup champion Adrian Conway. We have Kiki Dixon in the concourse here at Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. Now, weather has forced us inside for event number nine, the cleanup presented by Beyond the Whiteboard. And Adrian, at this point in the competition, we thought we'd be talking about a battle between Jeffrey Adler and Roman Krennikoff for the top spot in the overall standings. But right now, it's Pat Vellner's to lose. It's been the Pat Vellner show. Aside from one finish outside of the top 10 on the first event, which was Texas Strong, he's been very consistent. Recently, we saw him go ninth and 10th on the previous events. But I really like the way this plays out for Pat, knowing his strengths on the barbell. He's just got to make sure he finishes overhead with his legs to finish. That got him a little bit last year on the final barbell with the clean and jerk. So I'm excited to watch him finish strong. But yeah, it's been the Pat Vellner Show. It's been a new experience for us to watch him lead for the last two and a half days. And the barbells are out, and this is what the athletes are facing in event nine, the cleanup. It's going to be three rounds. They're going to go 25 double unders and five power cleans at 225 pounds. Two rounds, 25 double unders, five squat cleans. That has to be below parallel. And then one round of 25 double unders and five clean and jerks. And those clean and jerks can be done anyway. All of these rounds are done at 225 pounds there with the money bar. First heat getting set to take the floor. Overall standings coming into this final event. Pat Vellner started the day with a 90-point cushion. Right now, he leads Jeffrey Adler by 65 points. And we're looking at an all-Canadian podium. If Roman Krennikov can't knock either Adler or Fakowski out of one of those two spots, uh, Jason Hopper, he is still alive. Ricky Garrard is as well, but both Hopper and Garrard are going to have to probably win this event and get some help to get themselves onto the podium. Youngster Garrett Clark chalking up his barbell. Pretty strong youngster, made it deep into that deadlift ladder last night, bowed out before he even missed an attempt, just kind of knowing himself and probably how his body felt. 
Finished eighth in the deadlift. Pulled 565 pounds. These are the four men who will open up here in heat one of four. Will Morad in lane four comes in 18th place overall. His best finish was a seventh in event four. Yeah, Will Morad, several time CrossFit Games athlete, veteran in the space. Bit of a powerhouse when it comes to events just like this. Shorter stature, doesn't have to make that barbell travel a terribly long distance, but he is extremely strong, and I really like his chances with a moderately loaded barbell here for all the cycle. 225 pounds on the barbell, it's 102 kilos. They'll do three rounds of the 25 double unders, and they'll start with the five power cleans, then it's squat cleans, then we close out with one round of clean and jerks. Once again, weather has forced this event to be moved inside and given it a much more intimate feel as the fans are right on top of the action. We saw this with the strongman competition as well. Yeah, I love these atmospheres. It really raises the intensity of the feeling for the athletes to be in so close to the fans. Three, two, one, go. We are underway. First of four heats starts with the 25 double unders and then they will move to the 225 pound barbell for five power cleans. Mark along with Morad and here comes Victor Hopp. All the athletes choosing to go singles here out the gate. One rep at a time, dropping it down to the ground. And again, these are power cleans, so it's mandated to the athletes. And they've got to catch it above the parallel, which means they cannot squat with the barbell. Garrett Clark is back to start round number two as he leads here in this opening heat. Only has one finish inside the top ten. It was that result that we talked about in the max deadlift. We talk about different techniques here. Garrett Clark does a great job keeping his hips below his shoulders, and as he pulls, you'll notice he starts to pre-bend his elbows a little bit. He does that, creating tension in his arms so that he gets the bar to his hip for each power clean. It allows it to be a bit more of a powerful effort, reduces the amount of work he has to do with his leg drive. Garrett Clark back to the rope. This is his third and final round of the 25 double unders and five power cleans. Bailey Martin sits in second. Hoffer and Morad behind them. Now Clark is done. Back to the barbell for the final time for five more power cleans. Man, so get a chance to see what I'm talking about there. Watch his elbows. See how they bend. They pull the bar right into his hip crease. And then he jumps it right to his clavicle. The downside is it can reduce the amount of power that you are able to express if the timing of that arm bend is not perfect every rep. 80 total scored repetitions in this event, and now Clark is done in the first three rounds. Now the movement on the barbell changes to a squat clean. And Clark has opened up a pretty sizable lead here. Bailey Martin heading back to the jump rope. And Clark is done with that set of 25. Now five squat cleans at 225 pounds. Bailey Martin coming to the barbell for the first time for the squat cleans. First of four heats here for the men. Bailey Martin, he's in 16th place overall coming in. His best finish was seat at the bar. He took a third in event number two on Friday morning. Garrett Clark back to the jump rope. 25 more double unders and then five final squat cleans. It's all doing a great job at trying to catch that barbell high in their throat, like right at the base of their clavicle. It's going to help them stay upright throughout the squat, not risk filling the bar forward. Garrett Clark into his second round of squat cleans now. He's got to do four more of these before he goes back to the double unders for one more round. And then he finishes with clean and jerks. Two more reps for Garrett Clark as he continues to lead Bailey Martin on the right side of your screen. Clark 
back to the jump rope. And now he will have one round remaining here. 25 more double unders and five clean and jerks at 225. And he has to step over his barbell and step on the mat to finish the event. Bailey Martin is still in second place here in this opening heat. See how Garrett's overhead position is after all this fatigue built up in his legs. Been strong there, a little unstable. You could tell that one caught him off guard. A lot of times the first rep hits you that way. Two of the five reps down for Garrett Clark. Time being kept on the floor. So we'll have to wait until the judges turn in the scorecards to see what his time is going to be. Garrett Clark looks like he's going to win heat one as Bailey Martin is onto the barbell as well for his final five queen and jerks. This should be the final rep for Garrett Clark. And he closes out his 2023 Rogue Invitational with a heat win. We want to do it. And I'll say overall, Sean, what we see when, we, when we've seen any of the women who are winning their heats, they were dancing around the barbell less than these men. Great job there by Bailey Martin. Bailey Martin comes in in second place in the heat. Victor Hopper now with three reps remaining. When I say dancing around, I mean movement away from the bar after they can complete a rep. So the steps back, the moving around, the shaking the hands. Most of all the heat winners, I'll say all the heat winners, on the women's side, were staying at the bar, they were composed, and they were very intentional with allowing themselves minimal rest. It might be a precursor to, to share with us that we'll see a touch slower times coming out of the men's side. Victor Hoffer is across. Leaves Will Morad is the only man left on the floor here in this first of four heats. Morad is done, and Will Morad is in. He won in the books, three heats remain, and it is Garrett Clark who wins the heat. We'll wait for his official time. Garrett came out steady in this particular event. He did a great job just holding that threshold. Didn't come out blistering, wasn't necessarily the first one back and forth on the first transition, but he did a great job at staying composed, running his own race, having that tunnel vision, he had smooth execution on his double unders throughout. Great job, way to finish his, his first experience at the road. Started across when he was 12 years old back in 2010. And he'll have the ability to finish on a positive here as he wins his heat. He will. I mean, hey, he's been doing CrossFit longer than me, so I hope he's got some good experience under his belt. He's been able to clearly utilize those lessons as we watch him go through some barbell cycling here. Takes a brief step back, sets his back, sets his posture, executes smooth squat cleans, and then here in the finish, he did a great job jumping that barbell off of his front rack position into that overhead position. You'll notice that he actually receives the bar and then keeps his feet down even into his jerk. It's pretty rare, but great execution there by Garrett Clark. We are reset now for heat number two. And the men in the second heat getting set to take the floor here at the concourse at Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. And remember, we had to move this thing indoors because of the weather conditions outside. The bottom line is the show was going to go on, and they found a way to hold this event indoors here. Sean, it's been wild the way the weather has affected everything. I mean, we got here the first few days, it was hot and it was muggy, and then the rain would come and it would just get, we would feel like we were getting abused by, by the rain for a little while and then it would go away. And now today, it's like cold out there. I ran over to grab a coffee right before the, this event started and I was like, I'm really glad that I wore pants today and that's completely the opposite feeling that I've had all weekend long. So this weather is just all over the place this weekend. There was Tudor Magda getting set to take the floor. Chandler Smith behind him. Chandler Smith putting on a show last night in the max deadlift event. Won that event with a lift of 605 pounds, but decided to throw five more on there and put on a show for the fans. And he would pull 610 and left everyone leaving with a smile. Sure did. Put on a, put on a show for everybody. And I think that's important for... 
CrossFit athletes to remember, a lot of them sometimes come into this space with not a ton of live competition experience with a large crowd. And th they forget that, that people pay to, to watch you do your thing. They're here to, to watch, yes, your expression of fitness, but also uh, for you to be a showman and a showwoman, if you will. So Chandler, Chandler really did a great job, I think, creating memories, not just for himself, but for everyone that was here last night. And he said he didn't know when he would have the next chance to do something like that, so wanted to take advantage of it, not only for himself, but also the crowd. And that was a fun time last night with those heavy barbells out here. But the business at hand now is the ninth and final event, the cleanup. Chandler Smith and one of his best friends, Noah Olson, get to compete right next to each <laughs> other here. So that should be fun to watch between the two of them. And Chandler Smith finished on the podium last year, right now 12th place overall. Here are your lane assignments. As Tudor Magda comes in in 14th place, coming off a second place finish though in Big Cat. That's right, he did a great job on Big Cat. He did a great job on the deadlift, so you know, Combine those two, high power output with a little breathing involved, and then of course, the one rep max. This is kind of like what we've got here. We've got a monostructural piece in the double under that involves a little skill, but that weight being a moderately heavy load is something that we could see Tudor have great success at. We are underway, 25 double unders into the five clean uh, power cleans at 225 pounds. Noah Olson, Jordan Carl Gugenson, Jukic and Magda all pretty much to the barbell at the same time. All the athletes opting for singles here. No one coming out and doing anything new or surprising as of right now. No Olsen back to the jump rope as he leads here. Olsen in 11th place overall with 455 points. I think out of the spot inside the top 10. Second round of five power cleans for Noah Olson. Tudor Magda back to the barbell, as is Chandler Smith. See Tudor here executing a great pull from the floor. Good patience on the floor, a lot of speed through the middle, where he jumps and shrugs to get that barbell to his front rack position. Olson and Magda into round three of the double unders. And Noah Olson is trying to keep a streak alive here. This is his fourth appearance of the Rogue Invitational, and he's finished inside the top 10 the prior three times. His best finish was third in 2020. This is a good start to, to this event for Noah. He's, he's aggressive out in the front, but it looks like it's something that's going to be a pretty sustainable effort for him. Just got to stay steady at the bar. His feet are almost glued to the ground, not taking any steps back, not losing or wasting time. Magda and Olsen neck and neck in the lead here, approaching the two minute mark. And now they start the squat clean portion of this event after these 25 double unders. It's five squat cleans at 225, 102 kilos on the barbell. Magda and Olsen to the barbell at the same time. Magda's going to get his first rep in before Olsen starts his. Shooter looking more smooth than Noah as they go rep for rep here. He's up and under that bar. The bar path looks solid. The first rep took him forward a little bit. As you notice, he took a step forward out of the bottom of his squat. That means he probably didn't finish the pull there. you got to be patient. You finish your pull with your shoulders behind the bar. Magda's done with his first of two rounds on the squat clean. He head back, heads back to the jump rope along with Noah Olson, who now sits in second place. Lazar Jukic and Jorgen Gubinson are fighting for third, and it's Chandler Smith right now in fifth. That's the second mess up that we've seen from Tudor there. He's got to really fight to gather control of himself and remain composed. He's going to do great on the barbell. This is actually where he's got to put the most focus. Noah Olson is able to take the lead as he knocks out his first of five squat cleans on this second round here in this portion of the event. The time to beat is in the upper right hand part of your screen. That's from Garrett Clark at 441 flat. No Olsen on the right is now done. And so those two trips for Tudor Magda allowed Noah Olsen to 
grabbed the lead, and now Olsen has a chance to really put some space between himself and Magda on this final round of double under. 180 total scored repetitions here, 25 double unders, and now five final clean and jerks for Noah Olsen. We're going to get the crowd behind him as he is to the barbell for the final time. He's got to use a lot of leg drive here. No sweat for Noah. Great urgency on the first rep as often. That's the one that throws you off. There is Tudor Magda again having to break his double unders. Magda has now fallen back into fourth place. As Jukic and Gumanson are both under the barbell for the final time. Two reps remain for Noah Olsen. See Noah bending his knees, trying to shake him out a little. Final rep for Olsen. And Noah Olsen is across. Has to jump over his barbell in order to stop the time. 428.27 seconds for Noah Olsen to set the top time heading into heat number three. Lazar Jukic gets in at 435.25 seconds. And now Bjorgen Carl Gumanson is done. Tudor Magda will take fourth after leading for the majority of the heat. And Chandler Smith is the last man out there. And of course, Noah Olsen's going to go back out and cheer on his friend. And this could be the last time we see Noah Olsen compete as an individual. He has said he's going to go team with Chandler Smith. I wanted to have a little bit of an encore here at the Rogue Invitational. Smith with three final reps at 225 before he will be done with his 2023 Rogue Invitational. And with that, Heat 2 is done. Two heats remain here for the men. The ninth and final event, and Noah Olsen is going to have the top time at 428.27 seconds. Wow. These are all impressive times by these athletes when you got to consider what they've been through through these other previous eight events. But I'll tell you what, it was Tudor Magda early. We, we saw he was an athlete to keep our eye on. He did a great job executing early. It was rep for rep, him and Noah Olsen. But you got to remember, one of the keys to success here is to relax and execute. And Tudor had a few slip ups there. You got to be able to stay focused and keep that rhythm on your double under. Noah seized that opportunity as that door opened. He kicked it down and ran right through all the way to a finish for an amazing heat win for him. We'll see how his time holds up. 428.27 seconds for Noah Olsen as we now have two heats remaining. Lazar Jukic also gets in ahead of Garrett Clark's prior best time at 435.25 seconds. Tudor Magda will finish in fourth after leading for most of that heat, and it's Chandler Smith at 537.25, taking fifth. Two heats are left. As we are close to crowning a champion on the men's side of the competition here. Still some fans out there and braving the elements, which aren't too bad right now, but there's still a lot of moisture on the field, and the bottom line is they decided to move this indoors because they wanted to keep it as safe as possible uh, for the athletes. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of like the intimate environment. I do too. I do too. Again, it gives me this OG old school feel. Coming up in the space as a competitor, we, we, we didn't have the luxury of having a Rogue Invitational and all these fancy, amazing competitions that exist now in the space. We were throwing down outside in someone's parking lot or we were throwing down somewhere with uneven asphalt and the bars were rolling all over the place. These athletes are certainly blessed, and I really like that it, it brings it to that intimacy. And, and I'll tell you what, it, it, even, it even enhances what the spectators are, are getting to experience here, being so close to some of their favorite athletes in any sport in the whole world. They're getting uptight, uptight and, and personal with them for this, uh, for this event. Let's talk keys as Heat 3 gets set to take the floor here. Well, we talked about it a little bit as we watched Tudor struggle with those double unders, but one of the key focuses here is to relax. I know it's the final event. I know there's pressure. Athletes are going to finish this event and know exactly where they finish throughout this Rogue Invitational here. And, and it's important to remember, you just got to do you. And then, of course, finish with the legs. They're tired already, and your arms are tired already. They walked on their hands. They did dumbbell ground overhead. They did so much, Sean. And it's important for them on that last movement to finish that jerk with their legs overhead so they secure the barbell. 
one thing that has happened here in Round Rock is it has gotten a lot cooler. It's been pretty hot and humid the past couple of days. The temperature has dropped here on Sunday. Yeah, it is, it is it is cool out there. I was out there just about an hour ago and it was I was very shocked at the temperature. <laughs> Heat three taking the floor now. Yellow host to Jay Crouch, Ricky Garrard, Travis Mayer, and Dallin Pepper all up next. Dallin Pepper there in lane number five. Yeah, someone to keep our eyes on, that's for sure. He, he likes a, a good barbell cycling event. He's had great success on competing. You know, he played high school athletics, but he won the CrossFit Games three times as a teen athlete. There's a psyche there and an experience that, you know, if you've played sports, you know that winning is a skill. And so as we watch Dallin continue to develop in the space and we watch events like this where seizing the moment is really important and the pressure tends to be high, I always like to watch him and how he chooses to execute an event like this. Dallin Peppers had a great final day here as we are underway. Started the day with a win in Hulk hands and then coming off a fourth place finish in Big Cat. 428.27 seconds, that's the time to beat from Noah Olson in the prior heat. Ricky Garrard heads at the barbell. Garrard currently in sixth place overall, 495 points. Certainly not out of it as far as the podium is concerned, but he's probably going to have to win the entire event and get some help in the process. Watching Yella Hosta there finish his set of power cleans as he makes it back to join the rest of the men for the double unders. Yella certainly spent the majority of his offseason so far and still will go on forward working on movements just like that. A lot of clean and jerk squats and snatches for him. Travis Mayer on the left is your leader as we hit round number two of three on the power cleans. Mayer eighth place overall. 475 points for him. Yella Hosta on the barbell as well. Dallin Pepper and Ricky Garrard fighting for second place in the heat right now. Hosta Jay Crouch, a couple of reps behind the leaders as Mayer and Pepper return to the jump rope, as does Ricky Garrard. Travis, very high motor, very explosive athlete. These movements favor him a ton, especially coupled with a double under. It's like he's back there just loading his lower legs with every small bound that they take here. The biggest thing will be to see how he responds to the squat cleans and making that transition into the clean and jerks for the final round. Final round of power cleans for all the men on the floor. And now it's 25 double unders and we move to the squat clean portion of the event. Travis Mayer still your leader. Dallin Pepper sits in second, followed by Ricky Garrard. There is Ricky who started off pretty well, had an eighth place in Texas Heavy, then followed out with a win and seat at the bar. But then he had two straight finishes of 12th or lower. It drops down the overall standings, and he has yet to work his way back into contention for a podium spot. Now, Sean, it looked like Travis Mayer got a no rep on his initial squat clean, which means he and Dallin Pepper are going rep to rep. Another one. Yep. And he's not reaching depth. He's trying to make it very close. He's trying to blur the line, which, hey, that's their job as athletes. But the, the judge doing a great job at holding him accountable to the standard, and now Dallin Pepper takes the lead. Dallin Pepper to the jump rope for the second round of squat cleans here. 180 total score repetitions in this event. There's 30 reps per round. Dallin Pepper, your new leader after two costly no reps from Travis Mayer. And now Rookie Garrard is pushing for second place. And we saw Dallin Pepper pause there on his double unders. Not, not a terrible cost there for him because of course it's just something we can get back to. Not, certainly not as costly as two no reps on the squat cleans like Travis experienced on the last one. Now with two reps remaining on the squat cleans. Travis Mayer's managed to claw his way back towards the front here. Pepper continues to lead. He's in his final round of 25 double unders. 428.27 seconds is your time to beat. Dallin Pepper looks to continue what has been a fantastic Sunday for him with a first and a fourth so far today. Travis Mayer's in second, followed by Garrard. And I really
really like Dallin with his ability to go overhead. Very sound, secure overhead position. It's, it's if you could design an athlete to go shoulder overhead, this is what you'd want it to look like here. And he does a great job there getting support. Mayer to the barbell. This is where these guys really got to drive and finish with their legs. Final rep for Dallin Peppers. And he will have the top time. Heading into the final, he's got to get over his barbell, and that will stop the time. Dallin Pepper, 414.98 seconds, beats Olsen by 14. Now Mayer comes across. Mayer also squeaked in ahead of Noah Olsen's top time. Ricky Garrard is done. 432.83 seconds for Ricky Garrard. Now Jake Crouch finishing up, and that leaves Yella Hosta as the last man out on the floor. Yella opting for split jerks. It's going to help him cycle the barbell a little bit faster. He's got very long arms. He's got to make the load travel long distance. He understands a quick dip. Stepping with his right foot forward is going to help him drop under the weight without getting into a squat position. 225 pounds on that barbell, 102 kilos. Most of them might hit the ceiling with that thing. And this angle certainly does. Final rep for Yellow Hosta, and we will have one heat remaining after this. And there it is for Yellow Hosta. Pops over the barbell, and that will do it. 527.65 for Hosta, but it's Dallin Pepper and Travis Mayer, the two fastest times that we have seen so far. Pepper at 414.98 seconds, and he was able to take advantage of a couple of no reps from Travis Mayer during the squat cleans to do it. Yeah, execution and seizing the moment. Again, we talked about, hey, that's an advantage that Dallin brings to the field. He is one of the younger competitors out there. He's a rookie at the Rogue Invitational, but he's won championships before. Even at the teen level, that really accumulates. It's a skill to win, and Dallin Pepper put on a clinic here in regards to how to attack this event. And I'm sure the, the guys in the last heat were watching very closely. Smooth on his power cleans smooth on his squat cleans and did a great job at holding the standard so he got no reps taken away we saw Travis have to do a few extra and that's when Dallin really came on strong and then of course finished with a smooth execution and a power clean and a power jerk to finish he's got a very secure overhead position which lends itself to a huge advantage when of course the event finishes with clean and jerks and Dallin Pepper probably never had a drink alcohol in his entire life, but he's a little <laughs> wad drunk there and forgot. Got to jump over the bar to finish. We are down to the final heat, and it is time to crown a men's champion. And right now, Pat Vellner is very much in the driver's seat. Jeff Adler currently sits in second place. He's 15 points up on Brent Fakowski. Fakowski's got to hold off Roman Krenikov. Krenikov is down by 10 points, which means he has to beat Fakowski by at least two people. He's got to get one person in between himself and Fakowski in order to make up that deficit. And Jason Hopper sits in fifth, still very much alive, but is going to need to get some help and put up a strong performance in the final heat. If they all get on the podium, are they going to wear their flannels, flannel cutoffs? I don't see how you couldn't. <laughs> you know, we almost had an all-Canadian podium at the CrossFit Games. We were a little short of that. Roman Krenikov is right now on the outside looking in, but has a chance to track down Brent Fakowski here in the final event. Krenikov coming off a 14th place finish in Big Cat, but prior to that, a second and a seventh. And Sean, I got to say about Roman, we saw him have to sit out the final two events at the CrossFit Games. He broke a bone in his foot. I had questions on if he physically was going to be ready to compete at a high level, and he has shown me he is certainly ready. I don't know if the bounding and the accumulation of running and Big Cat and everything else has accumulated, but wow, what a show by him. Well, here's the thing. You and I have been doing this since Thursday, and this is really the first time that we've talked about it, which shows sure. you just how good he has been. That's right. He's made us forget about it, right? It's like, hey, he's, he's performing at a very high level, top level. So, you know, kudos to him and his preparation, the team around him that's helped him recover and get ready to rock and roll because he's shown he's, he's ready to be a podium threat yet again. 
Jeff Adler is behind Roman Krennikov. He currently sits in second place again with 540 points. The final heat making its way out onto the floor. Adler making his third career appearance at the Rogue Invitational. He's been third both times. Pat Vellner the second Rogue Invitational Championship, won in 2020. Brent Fikowski in his first appearance here at the Rogue Invitational looking to finish on the podium. And here are the lane assignments. Roman Krennikov would be a couple lanes away from Brent Fikowski. That's the man he's got to worry about. Pat Vellner just has to avoid a disaster here. Jeff Adler needs to come up with a strong performance to guarantee himself a spot on the podium. Jason Hopper, again, he's still alive. Yep. But he's going to have to beat everybody on the floor right now to get himself on the podium. And we still have times from prior heats that could factor in as well. And Jeff Adler's the one to watch here. He, he killed it on the final event last year. Heavy grace. He he's a strong athlete. A little bit of breathing here with the barbell cycling. I like this event for Jeff. Here we go. Final heat of the final event of the 2023 Rogue Invitational. As we get set to crown a champion. 25 double unders to kick us off. Roman Krennikov ripping through those. Brent Fikowski going to be the first man in the barbell. Five power cleans here at 225 pounds, 102 kilos. Dallin Pepper has the top time, 414.98 seconds. Kowski is done. Adler right behind him. Krennikov moving back to the jump rope. Vellner and then Hopper. Second to three rounds on the power cleans. Quick trip for Hopper. One of the keys here being athletes got to relax and all the athletes are relaxing on those double unders. Keeping low, relaxed shoulders, loose fingertip grip and they're, and they're ready to attack the barbell every time. Adler and Fikowski continue to lead here. Roman Krennikov though right on their heels. Pat Vellner sits in fourth and Jason Hopper is in fifth. Still very close as now Fikowski and Adler return to the rope. This is round three of the double unders and power cleans. And this is where you know Brent's got to have some urgency and he's doing a great job at it. As a, one of the taller athletes out there in the field, when it comes to the squat cleans, he's got a larger range of motion to travel. He's going to need to bank some time to stay ahead of someone like Adler. Jeff Adler now in the lead, kind of going rep for rep, maybe a slightly ahead of Fikowski here. Jeff Adler in front, Jeff Adler back to the jump rope along with Brent Fikowski. Roman Krennikov stays in third. Remember, Krennikov has got to beat Fikowski to have a chance, and then he's got to get someone between the two of them in order to make up that 10-point deficit. Now we start the squat clean portion of this event. There is Roman Krennikov, 515 points, fourth place overall. Adler and Fikowski onto the barbell. Where Adler's going to have the advantage. The cycle rate, the down to the up. Very good pull for him. He's not powering this as if it was 275. He's giving it just enough hip, just enough touch. The brush of his thigh to catch it in the bottom of the squat and stand quickly. He does a great job at keeping an upright torso in the bottom, which is a very big advantage, especially from a speed perspective, to stand up. But here they are, rep for rep. Adler and Fikowski back to the jump rope. Roman finishes his set of five squat cleans. Now the second and final round of the 25 double unders and the five squat cleans. Jeff Adler continuing to lead. At the 145 rep mark, he will go back to the barbell. And now five more squat cleans for Jeff Adler. Jason Hopper has fallen off the lead pace. Brent Fikowski's on in the barbell, as is Belman. Now here comes Krennikov. All these athletes are doing a great job at staying at the bar. Some of the earlier heats, what we'd watch is an athlete would drop the bar, they'd step back, they'd shake their arms, they'd shake their legs. They're staying at the bar, which is a huge key to remember and a great cue mentally when athletes have a moderate or a light weight there and they can cycle it quickly. Adler has taken the lead as Brent Fikowski stands up his final rep. 25 final double unders for Jeff Adler. Vellner's back on the platform. Time to beat is 14.98 4 seconds. Jeff Adler does have an event win under his belt. That was back on Thursday night when he took Texas Heavy. Looking for his second one here. He has five clean and jerks left. 
Brent Fikowski to the barbell, along with Pat Belner. Here comes Roman Krennikov. Two reps remain for Jeff Adler. Final rep for Adler. Krennikov is creeping up on Fikowski. Adler is in, and that should be Jeff Adler's second event win here at the Rogue Invitational. Now, Roman Krennikov trying to track down Brent Fikowski. And Krennikov's going to do it. If Brent gets across, as he does, it looks like he's going to do... Well, wait a minute. Dallin Pepper's time is in there. Dallin Pepper's time is in between Fikowski. Pat, finish with your legs. Krennikov and Pat Velder. He had a big enough cushion here that this isn't going to be a problem for him. Final rep for Velder. He is in. But this got really interesting right now as far as, as far as that final spot in the podium is concerned because Krennikov beats Fikowski, but keep in mind, Dallin Pepper's time of 4.14.98 seconds. Yep. yep, it comes into play here. Roman might have to buy him dinner. <laughs> That's 10 points that Krennikov will make up on Fikowski. Could come down to a tie break here, though. But this is going to get really interesting. Jeff Adler, most likely, barring some sort of unforeseen thing here, keeping himself on the podium in second place behind Pat Vellner. Vellner looking to be crowned the Rogue Invitational Champion for the second time in his career. Still some things to sort out here before we make it official, but that final spot on the podium looks like it's going to come down to maybe a tie break. It looks like Jeffrey Adler is going to finish on the podium, and we believe that Pat Velder is going to pick up his second Rogue Invitational Championship. He had a 90-point lead heading into the day. That was down to 65 coming into this final event, and he avoided a disaster. Yeah, he did. He did a great job. We talk about Pat doing his thing. But the story for this was Jeff Adler all the way. He put on a clinic with cycling that barbell a lot like he did in the final event last year. And it was the same weight, 225 pounds this time. It just wasn't 30 clean and jerks. It was a variety of movements. So Jeff likes the taste of anything at the weight buffet. He finished with a clean and jerk that looked as smooth as the first rep. And then we got here, Pat to finish. He made it happen, finished with his legs on that last one, and it's going to be a sweet taste of victory for Pat Vellner. Sean, we talked about champions and that being an important part, and Pat was the only returning champion here on the men's side. Winning is a skill. He flexed it one more time. We still have to wait for official results, but Pat Vellner put himself in a great position coming into this event with a 65-point lead over Jeff Adler. Now, Adler looking like he's going to win the event and pick up 100 points. The first time we've seen a repeat winner here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational as Jeffrey Adler bookends his effort with two victories, a win in Texas Heavy, and if all these scores hold, a win in the cleanup. Here we go, Jeffrey Adler, 100 points. Roman Krennikov will pick up 95. Dallin Pepper, his time gets in between Krennikov and Fikowski. That's a 10-point difference. Travis Mayer will finish fifth. And it's Pat Vellner who will take 10th. We will tabulate the scores, and Pat Vellner will wait and see if he did enough to hang on to the top spot on the overall leaderboard. Quick break. When we return, we will crown a champion here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. We are done with action at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. And for the second time in his career, Pat Vellner is your champion. And he is with Kiki Dixon. Pat, congratulations. It's been a minute since you won the Rogue Invitational. What does it mean to you to be back on top? It's fun to win it live. I mean, I, last time I won it, I was in my garage, basically. So it's fun to do it here with fans and stuff like that. I certainly made it interesting at the end as I always seem to do, but uh, it's fun. It's nice to come and have a, a trip pay off like that. And, you know, I, I, I worked hard this weekend, so it feels a lot better. I'm not quite so sore now that I know that. 
There was a lot of chatter about Roman and Adler coming into the Invitational. In what ways did that fire up this weekend to get the job done? I, it's always you got to take it as a challenge, right? They're exciting. They're, they're newer in the sport than I am, so I think it's easy for everybody to get distracted by the new people coming in. So I think it's a personal challenge for me to keep reminding people that I'm still around and uh, I'm still hanging with the top guys. So I kind of just use that as motivation. I don't want to walk away. I want to be displaced. So until that time, they better keep trying. As you mentioned, this isn't your first rodeo. So what takeaways do you look for at the close of a competition? I mean, I limped across the finish a bit today, so I'm glad I was so good yesterday and the day before because it was sure ugly today. But, you know, it's, it's nice. This weekend was cool because we had a lot of different obstacles thrown at us weather-wise, changing events on the fly, just lots of different stuff that can be frustrating if you let it, but it's the same for everybody, and I think it's easy to take away lessons on those things and just take, get more experience. As experienced as I am, it's still there's more to learn all the time. So. You know, I did great at some of it, and I didn't do so great at other things, so there's always stuff to learn. Definitely things to learn with each competition, but tonight you get to celebrate. What does that look like? I'm going to probably get some nice Texas barbecue with my family. They came down here to watch, so. And then, to be honest, i got to fly tomorrow morning at, like, 5.30 a.m., so it'll probably be an early night. I've been neglecting my family all weekend, so I'm probably going to catch up and mend those relationships for now. <laughs> well, congratulations. You are the champion. Thank you so much. Age and experience pays off for Pat Velmer. Second time he has been crowned the Rogue Invitational Champion. Embracing his coach, Michelle Latondra, who told me yesterday, when I saw her walking over here to the venue, she said, today's gonna be a good day for Pat. And that's what indeed it was, as he gave himself a 90-point cushion coming into the final day. He winds up on top of the overall standings. They are still working on the official results to figure out who is going to join him on the podium. You can head to roguefitness.com slash invitational for all the latest updates and standings. As we continue to work through things here in Round Rock, Texas. I mean, Pat Vellner just getting better with age, Adrian. Getting better with age. I mean, he, he did a great job. We, we saw these tests early, and we knew that he was going to be able to have success based on his strengths and weaknesses, and he showed that all weekend long. And with that, that concludes our coverage of the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Mitchell Hooper for the strong men, Laurel Horvath for the women, and now Pat Vellner for the men. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. For Kiki Dixon, Adrian Conway, and our entire crew here in Round Rock, Texas, I'm Sean Woodland. Thanks for joining us at the 2023 Rogue Invitational.